What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to the garage. Um, days like today is when you really, really enjoy having a garage and a nice black ground to work on. That's because we're gonna have to be doing, we're gonna have to do our own alignment um, a little bit later. Uh, from the title of the video, you guys probably already might know what we're doing today. Uh, but this is actually an issue that I've had for quite some time that I haven't really talked about on the channel. And uh, it's just something that's been bog bugging me, bothering me. I, I couldn't figure out what it was. So the issue I was having essentially was, or I am having, is that my steering, I don't know if it was the electric steering, if it was because I was you know, lowered, if whatever. But long story short, the, the car just felt really dirty. It was being pulled either side. The steering didn't feel super direct, especially at high speed. I was getting a little bit of vibration and just didn't really feel the greatest. And it wasn't until I took the car to Bren Tuning that I really had some kind of idea of what, what was wrong with it. So part of that tune process um, you know, obviously they did the, the dyno tune, they did walnut blasting for me, um, they did the new clutch and everything like that. And uh, one of the other things they said was like, hey, you may want to do this, you may want to check on this because we took the car for a ride and we think there's an issue. So let's get the car jacked up and I'll show you guys exactly what we're doing today and what the issue is and how we're going to be addressing it. So, a couple things you guys need to understand before we go into what exactly this entire kit is. So, on our cars, on these Subarus, uh, and, and most modern cars, um, there are two different kinds of suspension. You have double wishbone and McPherson struts. So, on our cars, we have a McPherson strut setup. McPherson suspension. What that essentially means is that you have your coilover or your component, your main suspension component coming down from the top, making connection in the back to the back of your hub. And then you have your lower control arm, which is this piece right here. It's coming out, it makes contact there, and then another down on the other side over there. And that makes connection to the back of your hub and those two suspension components are essentially what control upwards and downwards movement of this entire assembly you have your other connections which are your sway bar which is right here in focus sway bar your end link that connects the sway bar to the control arm, and then you have your steering rack input. So that is your tie rod, which is, ooh, I can get in focus, right here. So the steering rack pushes in and out this way to turn the wheels. So all of these come together to essentially have a very specific uh, setup. Um, it is pretty easy to work on compared to double wishbone, which you see in some larger body cars, some Mustangs, some um, BMWs and things like that. Um, but this setup is great because it is pretty simple to work on. So when you guys raise or lower your car, what you're doing is you're taking this entire hub and you're bringing it up or down. So if you bring it up, you're decreasing the amount of wheel gap in the top here and you're lowering the entire body of the car. The issue is, on these cars, when you do that, you're changing the angle at which this, uh, the lower control arm sits when the car has weight on it. So usually, when the car, there's more space here, the control arm is at an angle that comes from the, the point on the suspension, the frame of the car, it goes down to the hub. If you lower the car, that angle goes from this to flat. 
which means that you're changing the intended suspension geometry. Now, most people will think of that and they'll say, okay, what's the issue with that? You know, you'll need, a, uh, uh, you'll need an alignment, something like that, obviously, yeah. The other issue that a lot of people don't understand is that it affects the overall way the car handles. It affects the way your uh, steering input is, is, is coming, how it feels, how it affects on the car. It affects your, um, your caster. Um, all these things come together, essentially, to produce a worse steering feeling um, and handling experience on the car. Lowering it does help with reducing body roll. Uh, it does help with a bunch of things like that. Um, stiffer suspension, aftermarket coilovers, all those help. But the actual steering input and steering response is all dependent on the relationship between your strut, the back of your hub, your tie rod, and your, uh, the angle at which your uh, lower control arm sits when you're, when you're driving and going over bumps. So long story short, if you guys have a lowered car and you're having the same issue I do, where the steering input isn't feeling the greatest, it's probably because your lower control arm is now too flat to help pull the wheel back to center uh, when you're going over bumps and things like that. So essentially, this kit is the white ball, uh, the kit I have to install today is the white line roll center kit. Um, and it's going to help. So I'm gonna talk about a little bit more what exactly the kit is and how it helps. Um, but essentially, it helps reset and push that spacing between the back of the hub and the lower control arm out more. So the angle of the lower control arm goes from flat back down to where it's intended to be, which is down. What we have here is this kit to push in right there. As you can see, it spaces it out a lot further, which means that the angle at which this uh, control arm sits is gonna be more extreme. And once we lower the car again, it's gonna make sure that we have that really good um, angle. And what that does is it helps hold the wheel in the center position, um, instead of the wheel being pulled in either direction. Um, it's gonna have a sturdier feel. Uh, you're gonna notice that the turn in feel on corners is gonna be really, really a, a lot better. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get this started. First off, um, somebody in my last video suggested I start using uh, iPro, um, and I started doing it. So my mom saw the comment and uh, email, uh, texted me. So um, I am starting to use iPro when I'm under the car. Um, I'm a little annoyed and very frustrated. Um, I believe we've talked about this on the channel before guys uh we believe in full transparency um when we have an issue we talk about it we don't pretend like we're experts and everything that we do is 100 percent perfect every time so let me show you guys what's going on so this is apparently a super super common issue for subarus is that these ball joints um, get seized. So there are these spherical ball joints that sit up into the back of the hub right here. Right here where my thumb is. 
and essentially the way you get them out by whacking the crap of the out of the uh, lower control arm to knock them down out of the back of the hub now i might not be the strongest person in the world but i think i did put in pretty much as much of an effort I, as i possibly could um and what i actually ended up doing was i actually took a the jack and this extension and i actually jacked up the car so that the entire weight of the car was on this hub the back of this hub and my coilover compressed a little bit so that when i hit the lower control arm it would be able to knock out freely because you have opposing force going the opposite way couldn't budget um, I, it's been soaking in pb blaster for an, almost an hour or two now um, that was an issue um, the other issue i had was um the tie rod the stock tie rod which is over there got um seized also so i ended up ended up having to dremel that off and chop it off and uh well change of plans so we're only going to be doing the white line the outer tie rods we're only going to be doing the white line outer tie rods today. Um, these ball joints, I just, I need to take it to a shop to see if they can get those out and put these new ones in. Um, I do need to get the car aligned anyways. Um, and something else that I haven't told you guys about is that I have a whole bunch of other white line goodies for the car. So I already have the full sway bar kit purchased. Um, and then I also have the rear lower control arms. So. Today, what we're gonna do is we're going to get everything buttoned back up. I'm gonna be installing the new front end links to replace the old ones because they got seized anyways. So we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be doing the white line um, front outer tie rods, which actually do assist in the steering feel as well because they are different height. They do again push the help push the uh, the steering rack back into the the proper um, geometry when you have the car lowered. So we'll be doing that while we have the car already up on jacks. And then uh, we'll, we'll return uh, next week for doing the rest of the kit, uh, lower control arms, getting the ball joints in. And of course, I'll do a review video once that's all done. So um, apologies for, you know, I, we tried our hardest, but uh, sometimes this shit just happens and uh, you gotta roll the punches. So also, because I already know that somebody's gonna be down in the comments saying, oh, you know, hit it with something other than your purse. Um, <laughs> this is the lower control arm. Uh, it's getting all blown out. Well, let's see if you guys can see this. This is the lower control arm. And as you can see, there's now beat to crap because I was whacking it with a hammer that hard enough to dent the aluminum. So um, for those of you saying, oh, just hit it harder, trust me, um, for the tools I have and not being able to you know, lift the car up as much as I want to, um, yeah, this is what, that's what we're working with. So frustrating, but sometimes you just gotta concede um, I did tear the boot up a bit with the pickle fork, see if that could help, but anyways.
Okay, so it is the next day and um, yeah, yesterday was a bit of a cluster and uh, oh well. But um, I did get the new, um, the new outer tie rod ends on there. And as you can see, let's see if you guys can see this. I have quite a bit of toe in on this side. And I think I actually have a little bit of toe in on this side too, which means I took it for a test drive and my wheel was not straight. So I'm going to show you guys a really quick, easy method to do an at home alignment. It's not going to be super, super, super perfect, but it's going to be close enough to where, um, you know, you're not gonna have any issues. Um, you're not gonna have any safety concerns. You know, your steering's gonna be straight, all that. So, um, let me show you guys. So all you really need is a bit of string like this and uh, your two jack stands. Um, so what I like to do is just do a quick and easy clove hitch. And that's it. And then we're gonna do that on both sides. Essentially, trying to line up this string as close to the face of this wheel as possible. So um, I'll push this string a little bit further onto this side, like this. And then I'll go do it on the other side as well. This string, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but the string has the tiniest little bit of play. So it's not, it's, it's barely, barely, barely touching the lip of the wheel on both sides. And that's what you want. You don't want tension on the string. You want it as straight of a line as possible. And you're not gonna be able to see this beat, but on this side, it is making contact on the wheel here. So what we're gonna do is adjust this. See how it makes a little bit of a turn right here. So we're gonna adjust this wheel and get the toe back from being too far in to being a little bit more this way. So, cool. Pretty simple.
So as you guys can see, there is just the slightest little bit of gap. I can move the string in and out and it's pretty much even on both sides. And that's exactly what you want. That means that the string is straight all the way back. It's making light contact on the back wheels too. This is that littlest bit of play. And we're good. So that's, uh, that's pretty much, that is pretty much how you guys do a, uh, an alignment at home. Uh, it's actually not too bad. Um, again, I really recommend going into a shop to actually get it done professionally uh, if you're for, for the long term. But um, like I said, I'm gonna be doing more of those suspension components from White Line later on. Um, I'm sure when they add the ball joints, that'll affect the alignment as well. So. Um, for now, for a week or two, it should be completely fine to drive like this. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little frustrating working on these cars. Um, but, uh, yeah, we like being completely honest with you guys when we run into issues and, uh, sometimes shit's going to hit the fan and sometimes shit's like, shit like this is, a. Uh, sometimes it's just going to happen. You just got to roll with the punches. So, um, Thank you guys for watching. We got tons more content coming out for this car. Um, I'll let you guys know how it feels and I'm uh, really excited to get the rest of that kit on. So we'll talk soon. Have a good one guys. Peace.